So before COVID, um, Teapot Trust mainly worked in hospitals. Um, we were beginning to have conversations around working in the community um, because we're very aware that young people with chronic conditions, um, some of them may be in hospital frequently, but others might only, you know, touch a hospital once a year if that. So we want to make sure that we're, we're um, accessible to all. So when lockdown hit, we were all very much of the same mindset that we couldn't leave these young people without support. And um, these lovely pictures here are a selection of all different young people that have been supported since we've made the move online that otherwise wouldn't have been able to access the support. Um, as this lovely quote from one of the parents um, says here, there just was so many that had to stop. So we had to make sure that we kept going for these young people. So there was a lot of different challenges to make sure that it was moved online as safely as possible. And our art therapist will speak more in detail about adapting the art therapy practice itself. Um, but my focus was, as I say, adapting the processes and the services to ensure that we're able to provide safe and impactful service. Um, one of the things obviously was reviewing the areas of need. We're aware with the young people having chronic conditions, a lot of them were having to shield um, a lot of them, the family's anxieties were heightened because of this and because of home working, homeschooling, things like that. So actually the needs weren't exactly the same as they were before COVID. So we had to make sure rather than just popping exactly the same service online, making sure it was adapted to fit these, these new, new needs. Um, I'll go into in a bit more detail about the safety and security in a moment. Um, and as I've said already, ensuring equality of access. Um, so we always made sure that the young person was able to access technology and we always sent out art packs as well to make sure that that also wasn't a barrier. So safety and security was obviously key um, to any work that we do, but especially with a new way of working, we wanted to make sure it was as safe as possible. Um, so we reviewed all our current processes and really um, added in bespoke bits with child protection procedures about the online working because we recognize that the risks are different and um, so we couldn't just apply exactly the same using the same principles but making sure any risks were um, identified and um, clarified. Um, same with our risk assessments and we developed new policies such as our online security policy and the protection of vulnerable adults policy in response to identified new risks and um, new needs really as the art therapists were obviously seeing into the young people's homes and working more with families. So we needed to make sure that we had procedures in place to, to deal with anything that might come up, as well as making sure that we had all the right information about who was in the family home um, in case it was an emergency if the young person were to drop off online. Um, so we decided to use Zoom after um, a lot of um, thought and research in the different um, options, but we decided this was most suitable for us um, at the business level um, account so that we're able to set up the maximum security settings, such as waiting rooms, um, no recording on the sessions, um, and password protected meetings to minimize the risk of Zoom bombing. Obviously, the data was obviously making sure that was really secure as well. So, where possible, our NHS. Um, partner art therapists use their NHS email accounts if they were communicating with um, clinicians. Um, but if that wasn't possible, um, then we created Proton Mail email accounts as they've got an extra level of encryption and security. And we also made temporary agreements with our hospital partners to store any data online um, on our secure online storage system um, to make sure it was safe in the meantime until we could physically be back in hospital. So um, one of the reasons why we really wanted to um, put this conference on today is because we realize that it's so important to share learning because sh others sharing their learning really helped us in this journey to moving online. So these are just a slip, just a few um, of those that we found really, really helpful um, in getting advice. Um, so once we'd worked out the logistics, we then began small pilots to be able to test the watchers and make sure everything was held and contained and it was safe. Um, once we were able to test that, we started growing our art therapy online um, offerings. Um, we began with the ongoing one-to-one -one cases to make sure that they were 
um, safely held and then grew by piloting online groups and then workshops and then since then it's grown and we've been able to grow collaborations to make sure that we respond to the need as best we can. We obviously had to make sure that we communicated all of these changes to the parents, carers and children and um, so we came up with new documentation to make sure that we were able to do that to give them that level of clarity because obviously a lot of changes going on at the moment a lot of it's scary and intimidating so it was just to make the process as clear and as comfortable as possible for the, the parents and the young people so there's been a lot of um, positives from this move we've been able to um, be flexible with how we've changed our services in terms of being able to adapt to the individual need of the young people um, it's reduced practical pressures on family as we've realized we've been doing a lot more family support sessions um, they've not had the pressure of having to get to a hospital every week. Um, and with that, again, the ge geographical reach, as Ellie said, there's no more postcode lottery. We're able to reach anyone wherever they are. And um, as Megan's going to touch on in her presentation as well, the peer support through the groups was really beneficial um, to be able to offer that support during a time of increased isolation. So of course, there's been challenges. Um, we've had to ensure that the child or parent um, can have a quiet place to work. Not all families have that. Um, so we have been able to um, provide headphones, things like that, um, to make sure that they've got a private place to work. Um, we've also got to accept when sometimes the referral isn't working, sometimes the young person doesn't want to be online and that's okay. Um, it's just to make sure that we safely pause the work and maintain some kind of connection or refer them elsewhere to make sure that they're still safe. Um, obviously with the homeschooling and lockdown changing all the time, availability changed all the time. So we had to be flexible to how we arranged our sessions. And there's also been a notable increase in child protection concerns and in suicidal thoughts. So it's very much been key to make sure that the young people, again, are as safe as possible. Um, as I've already mentioned, um, that the family art therapy sessions came from an identified need through the art therapists being really part of the children's home almost in some ways and um, through being on the screen we recognize that the families are under increased pressure and that siblings are so often forgotten about as this quote from a parent um, here demonstrates that actually we needed to open up and um, even further to siblings and families this has also brought more opportunity for collaboration and partnerships because again geography has not been an issue and um, it's enabled us to all think quite creatively about how we address these issues um, and how we address individual needs. So we had to make sure that our contracted art therapists were supported um, in this work because obviously it's all new for, for all of us. Um, so we increased in-house clinical supervision and um, created clear guidance and guidelines um, to help support them through it. Um, and we also worked very closely together in adapting the sessions um, to make sure that they felt supported and to make sure that we were responding to need as well because their voices are equally important in um, shaping the services. So we used goal-based outcomes to measure progress. We realized quite quickly we couldn't just take exactly the same evaluation methods from our usual way of working to, to this way of working that it just didn't translate, giving them another form um, to fill in line. So goal-based outcomes made um, the young people feel empowered as well, that they were setting what they wanted to measure and they were setting what they wanted out of the treatment. So here's just some examples of the, the type of goals that the, art ther the children hope to get out of the um, art therapy sessions. And as you can see, most of it is around the stress, the anxiety, the negative mental impact of the condition. So we've had some really good results. Um, the online art therapy groups showed a reduction of anxiety around the children's conditions of almost 50%. Um, out of the goal-based outcomes, 93% of the young people made positive progression on at least one of their goals. And when asked how much the issue um, they identified as wanting art therapy to help with um, was impacting their day-to-day -day life before and after their art therapy session, they said it had reduced by two thirds through their art therapy sessions, um, which is fantastic. Um, this also created wider impact as well, which young people identified as actually, it can support everything that goes on in day-to-day -day life. It can make them feel happier, help them feel more contented about their condition, 
and dealing with the, the life of living with a chronic illness. And um, as a parent says at the bottom, actually all parents could do with a bit of it as well sometimes just to deal with um, the stress. Um, in terms of us as a charity, it's really been helpful. Um, we've been able to grow relationships with our um, young people, their families, our art therapists and our partners. Um, it's helped us to identify need through having those um, stronger relationships and it's helped us to have improved accessibility and reach. Um, so where next? So we're currently looking at that right now. Um, as part of that, we've developed our Young Voices group, which you'll hear from William later, um, as it's very important to us that the young people shape the future of Teapot Trust. Um, we've also developed a stakeholders forum um, for those partners that are also vital to how we provide our services. Um, Ultimately, the goal is for young people with long term conditions to receive the support they need when they need it. Um, and if there's anything, if you want to refer young people, if you want to refer young people to the Young Voices Group, or just have any questions at all, always happy to take questions.